Hey everybody, welcome back to The Goodest Cast. And on this episode, we have Julian Jacobs, my dude, my homie, my brother. Been teammates for over 10 years, been friends for even more than that. And uh, we definitely talk about some life shit on this one. Um, trying to see what's been going on with him. You know, you wanna know what's going on with the Sylvia build? Gets answered. You wanna know what's going on in, in life? We talk about it, so uh, definitely check this one out. It's a good one. We're still going on some tangents and talk about some wild shit like him crashing into the back of me and almost taking out the ABS house. So definitely stick around. I hope you enjoy this one as much as I did. Julian Jacobs, roll it. Hey there, boys and girls. Do you like to make your car cool? Well, you came to the right place. Because this episode, we got an ad for Kuro Works out of Atlanta, Georgia. The boys pulling up. They got the, if you're broke, dig ass. They got a garage sale section. And we got a discount code for you. And I don't even know what it does yet. It's good as boy. And you're going to have to go to KuroWorks.com and try and buy some shit and put it in and see what happens. And I'll probably tell you what the discount code is next time because we did this all really last minute. And that's what I'm talking about. That's how you know they're the homies. They're just supporting the podcast because it's fun. And we're supporting them because they know it's fun. A bunch of rippers out there supporting good driving, supporting cool cars. They got the engine bay dress up stuff. They got the sick aero options, rare stuff, hard to find stuff, the garage sale sections. Sometimes like people are selling their own personal stuff from their garage that work there and i think they do service too they like do builds and shit so if you're trying to get the fucking dopest shit in the south head over to coral works and get fucking set up peasants (laughs) sorry guys this is what comes out of my fucking head All right, guys, if you listen to the podcast, you already know about Tire Streets. That's where you get your Accelerator 651s. Right now, they're running a special bulk orders. Get like an extra 5 or 10% off their typical tier, whatever. So if you're trying to get some meats for the season, if you're trying to get some sticky joints, it's time. TireStreets.com. And if you're just trying to buy a couple tires, good as 651, 20% off the 651s. That's what I run, you know? that it's that good good you know the fucking spice (laughs) i don't know if anyone from back streets watches these but i really feel like they don't (laughs) anyway you know what to do get some tires make us look good y'all did that last year they came back this year they're supporting us you're supporting them we love to see it and uh once again, we appreciate y'all. I think we did it. Fallen nature is metal. No. Nah. Is it sick? Dude, yeah, it's just like really gnarly nature videos, like animals killing other animals. And shit. Yeah. That's good. Sick. Quality tent. <laughs> <laughs> uh so let me turn my phone on do not disturb because i'm a fucking good podcast guest yeah you are so we were talking about that i'm the most return pod guest even though i hate shit like this yeah thanks thanks for uh blessing us with your fucking aura i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why i hate it so much uh i don't know because you have social anxiety maybe it's not even just social anxiety it's like anxiety about talking especially when i know other people are going to hear it like we have i probably talk to you as much as any of my other friends and i can have a conversation with people it's just uh i don't know the pressure of knowing people are going to see it and i in that pressure i I always feel like there's things I wanted to say after. I don't know. I'm like, I don't consider myself a super deep thinker. And when I do it, like, it takes me a really long time to formulate my thoughts on things. I kind of, usually if someone asks me a question and I answer it, like a week later, I'll be like, ah, you know, I really, I wanted to say this or that Mm. 
I think we all do that though. Like usually it's like uh usually for me it's like comebacks and like a debate or like the worst is like when someone talks shit on the street and you're like, oh I should have said this. <laughs> you get a lot of people talking shit to you in the streets. Yeah, I'd be in the streets, so yeah, I mean you live in the city, so I guess yeah. you run into Yeah strangers more often. I kind of just hide <laughs> in the forest here. Yeah. Um No, I don't but, know. But yeah, there's I don't know, I admire people who like are quick quick thinkers and uh I mean I would argue that you're a quick thinker, maybe just not vocally. Like there's a definite there's a definite yeah. disconnect. That that's it. It's yeah, vocally for sure. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, the shit that you do definitely requires quick thinking. <laughs> yeah. I guess it does. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of it just feels like you don't even have to think about it, though. It just kind of happens. Yeah. Right? You you always said that to me when I was like trying when I was like trying to ask you, like, what do I like? What are you doing there? Like, how do you do that? And you're just like. I don't, I don't know. It just, <laughs> just kind of happens, and I'm like, okay, sick advice. I'm like, I'm, kind, I'm like starting to get to the point where I like understand what you mean by that because it's like sometimes it's like you're like doubling up muscle memories like on top of each other, and like you don't even really like realize what you're doing. Yeah, anytime I've ever done like a foot camera, I'll watch the footage and be like, what the fuck, I didn't know I was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's so because there's so many different things happening, it's kind of hard to think about everything. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. It's funny because I could like. There's a couple clips from this past event at AVS where Shane's in the car at the end of the day and he's recording, and I like say shit to him in the middle of a corner. Like I, yeah. like I threw it in, tr- tried to downshift to third, but I hit fifth, and then like right at the apex, I was like, "Oh, that was fifth. <laughs> Why did I need to say that right then <laughs> while still drifting?" Uh, I don't know. Shit happens. I I definitely like do weird shit in the car. <laughs> I had like yeah, I had I had some like in car video recently that I watched, and I'm just like. At the end of the run, we'll say some like goofy shit. I don't know. You're just like you're all hyped up. You never know. You never know what's gonna happen next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like a, when you hit nitrous. <laughs> I was about to say like a pit maneuver into the fucking <laughs> building. It. Cringe. Oh man. Oh, should we talk about that one? Sure. Uh, I'm just, you know, heading down the straight like like any other normal run and literally i just feel the back of my car like get light and all of a sudden i'm like flying at the building and i'm like what the what fuck the happened fuck is going and I was on like, i was like laughing because i knew you hit me i knew that you i knew that you like punched the back of my car and i was like dying laughing <laughs> and like i'm coming at the building and i just like floor it and i like luckily i made it past the building Shane's commentary is the best part about it. Yeah. And at the end, he's like, that nitrous works fucking good. good. <laughs> I was yeah. Dying, dude. yeah, so many people were like, oh, why do you have it on a button? You have to take your hand. I mean, yeah, but fair. Like, <laughs> I was joking when I was like, no, to <laughs> yeah. have it on a throttle switch. That'd be ideal. I was the one that said that you should put it on a button. So if you think it's stupid, at me. Well, it was just like a last minute thing. Like it was yeah. a nitrous kit that I found on Craigslist for 200 bucks and it was like missing some things. And I just had to order a couple switches on a bottle heater and then Eric hooked it up and Aaron, they both. Dude, I was for the first time in my life ready, ready for a drift event. I'm like, my car is like, I barely have to do anything. I just have to load shit up. I was so early that I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring a bunch of food and cook for the boys. We're going to really, we're going to eat good. We're going to live it up. That was pretty sick, honestly. And then 
we're doing nitrous in the car the day before we leave. I I I did have that thought. I was like, when you're like, oh yeah, we're putting nitrous on the car, and then I realized it was like the day before you're supposed to leave. Okay, you know why I wanted to do nitrous in this thing? It's because I thought for some reason that Z Nauki was driving also had a V8. And then we pull up to the track and he popped popped the hood and it was a fucking HR. I was like, it has a VQ in it? <laughs> I didn't even need to do nitrous. Yeah. Actually, his car was definitely faster, but yeah. Fucking barely got to drive with him now. I finally got to drive with him after all of those trips to Japan and both Super D's where he wouldn't drive with me because I wasn't good enough. And uh I found, I got I got my I got my redemption and like it he was in the Z, so it was like, I mean, I got to I got to beat up on him like a little bit. It was definitely I, fun driving with him in a car that wasn't super fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to actually have a chance to keep up. And left hand drive. Yeah. So he's slightly. I was like, ooh, comfy. that boy's struggling, dude. I'm like, I'm gonna get him. <laughs> Uh, you still put it on my door, though. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Um, I was gonna say something about the. I didn't finish my thought on the nitrous. Yeah, go go on, go off, King. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So I, I just wanted to explain. Like, I think it was, it was more of like a timing thing than it was my car being super fast with the nitrous. Because I, I think that was the first run where I like chased you, or maybe with nitrous the first i also i also didn't like i didn't like you didn't get I on didn't, it i didn't get on you it probably shifted slow i hit I the did. nitrous right as you were shifting yep because our gearing's different so like yeah. all of that played yeah. into it. it's not just like my car was super fit it was maybe like a 50 or 60 shot sick so it was hilarious yeah it made the funniest video i've ever seen yeah, I mean the fact that like nobody was hurt, no yeah. cars were yeah. hurt. Like, yeah, that was the funniest thing that's ever happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people thought we were like in drift, and you like hit the nitrous and like spun me out or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like we were just no, we, were we were literally like going up. down the straight, like not drifting. Yeah. Like we weren't spinning tire at all. We were maybe only going like. Yeah, that was the crazy part. Like I, I was like, yeah, I was just I was just going into third. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was getting into fourth like later on. So yeah, I was going into third. Oh, you were using fourth too? Uh-huh. Oh. Maybe our gearing's not that much different, but it was just it was a timing thing for sure. Oh uh, yeah. I think I I think I sandbagged on the start because I was like I kept gapping. You, you were doing you were being a nice teammate and letting yeah. my slow Z keep up with you, which I appreciate. Yeah. But after that. I'm yeah. not giving you shit anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick of this. Uh, I need my S13. Yeah. So what's the deal with that? Because I get the entire time I was in Australia, I probably got asked like 15 times by different people, like, what's up with this? <sighs> Not to mention all the times here. Yeah, I don't know. Like, so much shit. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah, where do you start, start from the beginning? And yeah. Like, everything that's been going on for the last couple of years? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've just been lacking, lacking motivation. Uh, I'm not really feeling my best physically. Um, and I already like struggle with motivation, and I think we all do. Yeah, but Jason's car used to live here, so he used to be here all the time, and like Jason's a super good like motivator. So once he moved out, it was already a little harder to like. Yeah, he bought a house in Sacramento with his wife. Had somewhere to keep his car. Grown man things. Yep um but yeah i don't know i've been my body's been hurting <laughs> for a while now i think like anyone that knows me knows that like i've had back pain and injuries and shit and that's it's kind of held me back a little bit over the years at one point my back was completely fucked and i 
constantly needed one of you guys to help me lift something or you know always have to stretch multiple times a day i've been kind of jacked up but um a couple of years ago i like woke up one day and my hands were just stuck and i worked out the day before so i thought maybe i'd just overdone it and uh it just like didn't go away and it was super weird and i'm like i kind of like went deep trying to research things that it could be and i'm like it feels like some kind of arthritis and then i'm like do i have rheumatoid arthritis and then i started getting all these blood tests and then we've had like leaks in our roof and a bunch of mold in the house so then i'm like going down the rabbit hole about potentially being exposed to toxic mold and yeah um, which is gnarly yeah because it wasn't just joint pain like i was super fatigued all the time and so i just felt worn out um but yeah my hands were hurting hella bad and then when my hands were hurting my wrists would hurt and then sometimes my knees would hurt my hips would hurt and it was just fucking draining (laughs) like um you know we we talk about all kinds of life shit and what we go through mentally but i'm like pretty lucky in the sense that mentally i'm usually pretty strong but like yeah. when i'm not feeling good physically it just absolutely drains me mentally and uh so anyway i'm terrible at telling stories this is why i hate doing podcasts because i'm <laughs> not good at like telling a story from start to finish and i bounce all over the place hey man uh it's cool okay i'm with you it's been it's been a good ride so far all right all right um so i got i probably did like 60 or 70 blood tests last year yeah like i was just trying to figure out what the fuck was going on and most doctors were telling me everything was fine so like after a while i'm like am i just fucking losing it like you know i'm in my 30s a lot of my other friends in their 30s are like oh my back hurts all the time my body hurts all the time so i was like wondering like am i just is this normal and i'm just being a bitch about it and so I, you know i struggled with that a bit but I had some like kind of scary blood test results with uh, my white blood cells were pretty low. And so I fucking scare myself with WebMD. <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> digging into it, trying to figure out what it could be potentially. And then I had to, I had like my spleen scanned and that was enlarged. And so they're kind of questioning some autoimmune stuff or like, I thought maybe I could have some type of blood cancer. So I had a bone marrow biopsy, which I fucking, <laughs> I like posted it on my story at the hospital. And I don't remember. Like I was loopy as fuck. And yeah. I, I regretted it so much the next day because I had so many messages, like people worried about me. And I'm like, fuck, yeah. I'm not dying. Yeah. You know, I, it was scary, but yeah, I just, I don't know. Felt felt weird about that, but I don't know. I've been kind of wanting to explain this stuff just because I've fell off so hard for the last couple of years, and just like we get so much support for drifting, like so many people support us and sponsors and shit, and I just haven't haven't delivered on my end, and I feel bad, even though people probably don't care. It's just, I don't know. It's hard to not feel bad about it. But anyway, uh, what else? So, back in like October, um, something like that, I I had seen a rheumatologist, and he looked at my hands and because yeah, he had like joint pain kind of consistently for a while at that point 
Yeah, there was a bit a period of time where I was taking ibuprofen twice a day. I like, had to, or I was fucked. I like, couldn't do anything. Yeah. Also, my uh, my job sold to a new owner, so things kind of changed a little bit. So that was some added stress for a little bit, even though it, it worked out and my new boss is sick. But um, we switched to working four tens. So, like after work, I was dead. So these days, like the weekend is so precious to me. It's three days, but yeah, I can't get shit done during the week. It's, yeah. By the yeah, time I'm smokes. home, it's like it's been dark outside. And it's like yeah, and then, I mean anybody doing four tens is rough. But if you're like also not feeling well, like physically, it's yeah, yeah. Growing. And then trying to cook dinner and try to work out. Yeah, there was a long period where I couldn't even work out, which probably just fucked me up even more. Um. But yeah, so the rheumatologist was like, oh, I don't see anything from a rheumatology standpoint. Like, I think you're, you know, you don't have rheumatoid arthritis. I'm just like. And rheumatologist is what kind of doctor? Uh, They what? work on like arthritic and rheumatic diseases, like autoimmune stuff. Mm. Um, and I've been seeing a hematologist, which is a blood specialist. Um. I talked to a naturopath and she was kind of like, I've had a lot of shitty experiences with doctors. I'm sure most people have Yeah, Our healthcare system is bullshit. It's kind of like, take this medication, make you feel better. And that's it. But nobody wants to get to the root cause. And the, uh, the naturopath, she was like the only person that was looking at my blood test results and like, Hmm, that's weird. You're, your cholesterol is really low for some reason. It's just said that normally you know, at first glance would sound like a good thing, but it's kind of weird. And there was a bunch of weird, my thyroid levels were weird, all kinds of weird shit that could be so many different things. So I'm, I was just constantly researching, <laughs> trying to figure out things it could be and scaring myself. Yeah. And so yeah eventually i was just sick of it and i'm like all right I, I need to start trying something change things up change up my diet like i had i've been eating somewhat healthy for a while like one day i was actually travis regona told me one time he was like dude you got to get rid of sugar it'll help with your pain and i was like eh, really yeah i've always i mean as you're growing up you just eat whatever you want and you're fine I was like, yeah, I need to kind of try something different. Sound sounded fucking crazy to me, and it still sounds crazy to even say it out loud, but I've been hearing about carnivore diet. You know, a lot of people talk about it, healing autoimmune shit, and it, I still don't even get it. It, like, doesn't make sense, and it sounds crazy. But I was like, I need to try try this. And Phoebe did it with me, which is because you've tried like you tried a lot of different like dietary stuff also to like work on pain and stuff. And yeah, so during the time where I'm having all these like arthritic pain, I started trying all these different things. Like I experimented with fasting. I did a couple like two day fasts and that would like take my pain away, but then I would start eating and it would come back pretty quick. Mm -hmm. um, I started taking cold showers. I did that uh, in the middle of winter last year. I decided to start doing that and that helps. It's pretty crazy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, especially out here, your water is cold. Yeah, and then like I've been doing ice baths and just trying every single thing I could do to like take inflammation down and not be in pain all the time, all kinds of different supplements and um let's see. Where was I? So anyway, yeah. I was like, I'm gonna try eating just meat. <laughs> and dude, that that was the best I had felt in the last decade. Like, 
we eased into it and kind of like cut carbs out slowly because you can shit yourself if you just switched <laughs> to meat <laughs> only. But uh, and no, had no issues with that. And yeah, like three days in, three or four days in, my pain was probably seventy five percent gone. Damn. And it was like, I like almost cried. I was like, holy shit. Like, you found it. Yeah. I was like, this is it. So many benefits too. Like, so much energy, focus, sleep was way better. Phoebe got, Phoebe got a six pack. Phoebe got really close to having a six pack. She was almost there. She's still almost there. She's still working on it. Yeah. That's one of her dreams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get a six pack um i'm not eating just meat anymore but i wish i could because it was that good it was that good for sure mm -hmm. i don't know if it's the best thing long term there's so much info that conflicts some people say you can do it forever yeah um so then let's see that was in november but anyway i haven't eaten uh like anything processed or really small amounts of anything processed since november yeah it's march now mm -hmm. made a huge difference it's crazy um I can't remember what happened next. Oh yeah, I had so I had an appointment with the hematologist that I forgot about. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I pro there's probably some blood tests I need to go do. So I went and to get some tests done. And in their system, they were like, Oh, you have some orders from rheumatology also. Um and I was like, okay, yeah, I might as well do those too. I forgot. And so then I have the appointment with hematology. He's like, things are looking okay. Your white blood cells are even back up. I'm like, oh, sick. Um, so I think everything's good. And then literally the day after, I get all the blood test results from rheumatology. And I'm like, oh, shit, this like looks like I have lupus. Just, yeah, I remember from, you called me. Yeah. And you're like, I'm looking at my blood test. And I was like, you're looking, you're looking at your blood test. Like, I know I always, always do that. Don't just try to interpret your own blood tests. You should talk to your doctor, <laughs> but dude, they shouldn't make it available to you long before you see your doctor. Yeah. It's super stressful. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I, it was like pretty clear and yeah, the rheumatologist was like, yep, you have lupus. And I'm like, oh, sick. And lupus is an autoimmune disease. Yeah, that like where your immune system attacks your joints and it can attack your organs. Um, it's presenting itself fairly mild in my case, which is good. But um, the thing that I noticed that other doctors didn't notice was that my kidney function had plummeted like within the couple months that i was eating meat I, I didn't eat only meat by the way i ate like was eating some fermented foods and a few other things avocados and some other fruit yeah and that was doing really well um some people are super strict about it i don't think you need to be unless you got some crazy shit going on but uh yeah so my kidney function had plummeted and had I known what was going on, I probably sh wouldn't have done like an all meat diet because high protein can be really hard on your kidneys. Mm. And so then I'm, yeah, he tells me you have lupus, you can live with it um, as long as it's not like attacking your organs. And then we'd have to get more aggressive with the treatment. I'm like, did you see my kidney function? And he was like, oh, no like those test results are right below his test but they don't want to like look at other people's they don't want to work <laughs> uh yeah yeah and he's he like well, like, i already got to give this guy some bad news i don't want to i don't want to give him all of it at once and you're like just, just fucking tell me like i need to know yeah 
So he's like, okay, uh, can you go do a year analysis right now? Like, <laughs> sure. So I went straight to the lab and did that. And it, it was nothing too bad, like no protein in it and, you know, things that would show that it's really bad. So the, the function maybe had plummeted because I was feeling so good that I was working out way harder. I was eating really high protein and that alone can just show your kidney function down. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, so I had to add some other foods back in, which sucks. <laughs> uh, but I still feel pretty good, and I'm getting back to it slowly. But um, yeah, I mean, it's like, I feel, I don't want to like use it as an excuse or, you know, I feel bad complaining about it because people have way worse problems. You yeah. Know, like I'm doing okay. But like I said, feeling like shit physically was fucking me up for a bit. Yeah. And then on top of that, like, I don't know how much I should go into that stuff because it's like, it's not all my business, but. Yeah. Other what? life stuff. Yeah. Friendships. Friends struggling with problems that i was trying to help with there was just a lot of a lot of stress and a lot of load on me that i didn't even really realize was there i thought i didn't think it was affecting me that much and yeah then it was <laughs> it was fucking me up yeah i mean whatever michael's been open about his struggles so i don't think he'll care that i mention it but yeah. yeah michael's one of my best friends and business partners and got him a job working with me for a bit and if we need to cut any of this shit i can ask him if he cares okay but yeah that was rough that's you know super d michael's a huge part of super d so that's why super d has falling off quite a bit not all his fault but um it's hard to like carry on these things that take a lot of effort and be the only one that's like with any kind of drive to do new things or make shit happen yeah just to be clear i don't make sh shit happen on my own like, <laughs> so many friends help out with everything but like if i'm not saying like let's do this shit it won't really happen right with super d and heat maker stuff and but as far as team shit like you guys have seriously held it down for the last couple of years and i appreciate it like all the I haven't posted shit on the animal style Instagram in like probably over a year, yeah. a couple of years. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's I me. mean, now I am, but like, it was like, yeah, it was me and Aaron for and Jason every once in a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's why you seen all that BMW content on the fucking animal style page. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's good. I mean, Without you guys, I feel like shit would have just shriveled into nothing. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, definitely helps to have a group. So when, you know, people are, I mean, there was like two years where I like, I drove like maybe like six times. Not that I was, you know, carrying much weight on the team back then, but it's like, you know. People, people, people be going through shit. Yeah, and we're we're adults now. Like we're gonna have off times, but that's that's what friends are for. We gotta pick each other up. Some some will be down, some will be up, and we just gotta keep the balance going. I guess. Yeah, it's been good. Like I feel like we have 
we got the best group of dudes yeah so there's no not much drama <laughs> yeah. there's drama in anything yeah like, especially anyone like anytime you're trying to like do shit like or like push or like anything there's always going to be but there's never a, there's never really like drama on the track or oh no like anything anything related to like car shit it's all just like you know logistics or fucking you know yeah that's whatever. the other thing like I've now been drifting like close to like 20 years or at least been like really into drifting for almost 20 years. Yeah. And like the business side of it, like is still, still feels so weird and new to me. And it's hard to like treat it seriously. I don't. Yeah. That's why I still have a (laughs) full-time job. Um. But yeah, I've definitely like considered trying to make yeah you know, things in drifting more the primary source of income. But it's I feel like I'd probably get burnt out on it if that was my only thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I I struggle battle with that too. I mean, there's there's no way like this. I, there's no way I could like stop working and do this podcast. Like, I mean, maybe like with a bunch of other shit but it's like i don't know it's it's kind of like the dream to just like only worry about drifting and but like i don't think it's reality like all of us still have full-time jobs yeah nobody on the team's like you know nobody's i mean we're all all in but like yeah not to that extent yeah i don't think it's really like i don't it's hard man you gotta have like you have to have a certain personality to make it work i got you know i think you've got a taste recently of just how like i mean you've been known for a while but as more people know about you and are into your shit there's like more pressure on you to perform well and yeah i i put a ton of pressure on myself when I went to Australia. Like I was practicing right hand drive like nonstop. I was like, I was like, I I like I can't go out there and like suck. And I went out there and kind of sucked, but I drove better later. I don't know. It's just like uh I mean uh, Australia drifting is more about partying anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking rip out there too though. I mean, yeah they do some good fucking drivers. I was like very impressed. I was I, I was I wasn't just impressed. I was like intimidated. So I was like, I, it, I was like, man, I wish I like had my car. Like, cause you know, you can like, you can go drive somebody else's car, like pretty good. Um, but like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. It, I, I don't, I derailed you, but no, you're fine. I, I think the main thing I took away from, when we went to Australia, it was like, oh, damn, I need to, like, try to hang out with the homies more while going drifting. Yeah. Because it's usually, like, I'm the last one to pull up (laughs) and (laughs) get some runs in, and it's all about the driving, and then go home. But, like, it makes it way more memorable when you, like, have some fun times with your friends. Yeah. Honestly, like, the the journeys to and from places like the the caravan the trailer caravan like when we went to canada and back i was like i don't know i was fucking doing silly shit and so went to japan like you know you drive like two days but you're there for like a week you know just like running around osaka with the boys like cracking beers or you know whatever you get into just fucking cracking jokes you know like having a fucking silly ass time with the homies like in other countries it's pretty cool that we get to like do all that how crazy is that like we've like drifting has been a catalyst for traveling to other parts of the world i yeah. never would have thought that yeah i never would have like hung out at a fucking campsite in like in australia for a week <laughs> yeah <laughs> with a bunch of fucking wild Aust- the australians 
have I want to see like an Australia versus New York like sarcasm shit talking <laughs> contest so bad cuz they're all Damn. so fucking good at it but like also so is New York. Yeah. And it's all like like Australia is really subtle. Like you can't tell like I don't know. I was like talking to Mez and I was like <laughs> like the difference between like a thumbs up like a good thumbs up and a bad thumbs up and he's like it's all in the face like you know, <laughs> like, oh you know <laughs> like good oh that good job or, i don't know I, or yeah you fucking idiot <laughs> yeah yeah, like, yeah exactly yeah yeah julian's got the makes, face down makes sense <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh but yeah i was talking to jack from hit and run at at halfway hangs and he was just like I'm not going to do his voice, but it's like, he's, he's like, <laughs> he's got the most calming voice I've ever heard in my life. Just like, yeah, man, like you, you're here. <laughs> like, did you ever think drifting would bring you here? And you're like, no, like I didn't, I didn't think that I'd be hanging out with a bunch of people I've never met for a whole week, but have so much in common. And like, doing that trip alone was kind of wild. Like I've never done anything like that before. And he was just like, dude, you came here like by yourself. Like, and like all you have like a connection with like all these people just because of like what you do. And like you, like you get to, you know, come here and drive. Like you get to, you know, experience this whole thing all because of like this one, like singularity between everyone. It's, it's pretty crazy. It's so crazy. <laughs> yeah jack's jack though he's got soothing energy yeah <laughs> yeah yeah if I, he did guided meditations i'd pay <laughs> um yeah i talked to him and dylan on the way home from avs because i was driving fucking like 13 hours or whatever it took 14 hours yeah because it was snowing and like the on the beach in california when you guys were driving back that was crazy. Not made for snow, dude. No. You're not a snow bunny? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> ha, this is the it's the first podcast without alcohol. Yeah. What were you talking to Jack and Dylan about on the way back? Or are you just saying that? Uh <laughs> just shooting the shit with them. They were pulling Jack's motor Sick. to paint his engine bay or something. Yeah. I was just like bored and tired. Yeah. Towing by yourself is pretty taxing. I think I'm going to fix this and we'll edit it. Buy that Goodest Co merch. You feel me? Yeah. And get that fucking heat maker. Turn up the fucking heat in your life. Turn up the hot. Turn up the fire flame heat. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, or were we? It wouldn't be a Julian pod without a burp. Yeah, dude. We can make it happen with sparkling water. <laughs> so you're saying this is the first sober pod? Yeah. Nice. Feels weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. It's good though. Yeah. Trying to not drink much. I'm dude, I'm trying to be healthy as fuck these days. <laughs> <laughs> you really uh, are. It's kind of impressive. Dude, I just don't I can't fucking feel like shit yeah. anymore. Like I if I'm gonna do any of these things that i want to be doing like i have to feel good yeah but yeah that's kind of kind of what i'm on these days I'm just trying to like optimize my life in every way as far as eating healthy and getting good sleep and all that it's crazy how much of a difference it makes yeah that's crazy and yeah, just trying to just trying to figure out life, man. I know you are too. Yeah. Been on a been on a big journey. Figure it out. <sighs> yeah, it's been shit's been 
weird lately. Just trying to figure out, trying to navigate the world and kind of realizing what real friendships are and just, <sighs> yeah, I feel like you get to a certain point where you just, I don't know, become more self-aware and want to like figure out how to be better yeah in every way to the people around you and to yourself and i'm just kind of at a point where if you're like around my age and you think you've figured it all figured it all out and you don't have anything you can improve on or you're not learning about yourself anymore i i don't know if we can have a strong friendship like it's i need to have people around me who like want to do better for themselves these days yeah need it i mean there's there's always something that can be improved on right like yeah i feel like we're all gonna be learning how to do better until we die i yeah. feel like you should be doing that if you just think you totally know yourself it's not going to be a fulfilling life or maybe it will be to you i don't know Just... yeah i mean it depends uh, there's yeah there's always something can be improved on it's like at which level do you want it to to be improved on like you know what things are you looking to improve on is it is it purely like skill of you know xyz or are you trying to be like a better person or like you know what like because there's you know everybody's like working on shit but it's like well not everybody that's the thing that's what i mean yeah like, not everyone's working on their shit and everyone works at a different pace i don't know I'm trying to like trying to be more understanding of the way other people's minds work and Trying to be more conscious of that. I don't know how I got on this, but mm. this is just where my life's at at the moment. <laughs> just trying to do better, trying to be a better friend and a better person in general. Not yeah. that I was a shitty person. It's just uh, <laughs> I don't know. Things things do change. Like you think, yeah, you think you know it all, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit. <laughs> And you should be able to change your mind. I mean, there's definitely a point in my life where I thought I knew it all. Like, uh, undeniably. I was I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, fucking blah, blah, blah. You know, no one can tell me shit. I know everything. Like, don't don't come at me with like, you know, but yeah, I think as you get older, if you aren't like realizing you don't know what the fuck's going on, like. It's crazy to think that, like, our parents were, like, our age when they had kids. Like, I, I don't thought know about... what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine having a kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, I look at fucking homies that are having kids, and I'm just like... And you know, you, like, you know, you talk to them, like... You know. They're all just trying they're to just like They're just like, they're like, I hope it works out. I don't know. Like, and you're like, dude... I don't want to say that I'm more uh I don't want to say that I'm more uh have my shit together more than my parents did or do but the thought of like me having a kid scares the shit out of me but like knowing my parents at the age that I'm at now I'm like what were you thinking <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, and it's crazy how yeah and the the way they were at that age yeah the way they raised you it kind of it makes you who you are now though true that's that's what's crazy like, yeah it was probably not the best way to do it there's no like right way or best, best way, way to do it yeah. there's definitely a right way 
Yeah, yeah. and it was especially harder back then. They didn't have the internet. They were just kind of winging it and yeah. learning from their parents. That's yeah. another thing I've realized so much in the past few years, just like having some friends that you know have kind of had an easier childhood, like they grew up with parents that were able to give them a lot of the things that they thought they should have and they struggle with normal life because life was too easy growing up that's the real shit like yeah you gotta it's some fucking joe rogan preachy shit but like you have to go through hard things to be able to cope with normal life yeah or if you're in normal life yeah or if you're trying to like push and do like you know strenuous difficult things like if you if you were born in it you're born in the difficulty yeah it's it's, i don't know everyone has their own shit and fucking yeah it's all relative to everyone's situation yeah but you know like people out in the jungle they don't have anxiety they're just living their life and that's it they need to hunt and yeah, i don't think they have a choice they can't just exactly be like, <laughs> i'm scared of baboons like or which jungle whatever are there baboons in the jungle i think so probably some jungle some jungle sick <laughs> I'm and smart. This big brain conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we're on this shit. I, uh, no, you're good. We're well. talking about less drifting than usual. Maybe people are interested in this. I don't know. I think so. What else? Is well, you cool? haven't been doing much drifting, so we can just talk about fucking baboons and jungles and people in jungles without anxiety. But you're right. I mean, Anxiety comes from, well, I actually don't know. I don't really know how anxiety is created, but I think it's like, it's like unstable environments. So like maybe people in the jungle do have a little bit of anxiety, but they don't have time to blame it on and blame not, you know, being able to hunt on anxiety. But yeah, I mean, these days it's for sure worse. Like people are super anxious. Yeah with like the social media era where everyone just feels extra pressure and everyone's addicted to dopamine and oh yeah fucking the first thing i do when i wake up in the morning is find myself like if i delete instagram the day before and i wake up in the morning i'll catch myself like trying to find the app when i wake up and you're like dude are you fucking serious like yeah, I mean, to be honest, this is like the only way I get to have a conversation with you without <laughs> you pulling out your phone every two seconds and getting distracted. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, You're bad, dude. I'll admit it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll admit it. I, I've gotten to the point where I'll delete Instagram like three or four times a day and reinstall it. And the, the That's a lot. The time in which it I reinstall it is getting shorter. And I think that I need to like completely remove myself from instagram for like a month or something or maybe more because i I did the same thing with facebook i was like super addicted to facebook and i just i just left and there was like times where i'd go back on and you know you'd like get that like you would it's crazy like you leave facebook for like two months and then you come back and you're like what the fuck is this shit like i don't even want to see this like it's all just like random people's opinions and like the last post that i have on facebook is from like 2017 or something and it was like (laughs) it's so edgy it's like i'm leaving this fucking app because it was like (laughs) i don't know i was like fucking how i was probably like 25 uh it's like i'm leader maybe a little older 27 i was like i'm leaving this app it's just opinions and no one opinions really fucking matters on this fucking place like talk to people in real life like i'm out and (laughs) 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 And when i I, when i was selling the the 2.5 rs i had to like i made a uh market i reactivated my account to like put it on marketplace and i read that and i was just like oh my god 
god, dude. Like <laughs> it's so it's so fucking cringy. Dude, I but I might have to I might have to do the same thing with Instagram. And just and just like because it's yeah, it's fucking crazy. I cringe at literally everything I've ever posted. <laughs> I just like hate everything I've ever said. <laughs> um yeah, the internet's such a double edged sword. Yeah. Like it's been it's such a good tool. Like the I only got on Instagram for drifting stuff. I told I you to get on I, Instagram. I uh, I remember it. it. Yeah. I was like, yo, you gotta check this out. You gotta get on Instagram. It was when you lived in fucking Petaluma still. Mm. I came over and I was like, dude, check this out. All the all the drift people are on here. Check it out. Check it out. And I'm like, you made one and had like five thousand followers in like the first like day. And I was no. like, this is so not true. It was like a lot. I don't know. I had like two hundred or something because it was just like brand new. And he had like a gang of fucking followers like immediately. And I was just like, oh, sick. But yeah, the internet, like, it's such, it's been such a good tool, like, for, for drifting stuff, not only to, like, meet so many people from around the world that are also yeah. into it, but, like, you know, when we started to have sponsors and shit, like, yeah. how are you going to promote sponsors these days without social, social media? media? I know, that's the hard Everything part. Is how like, am I supposed to promote the podcast without social media? Yeah. Like, I look at, there's all these other, like, drifting podcasts that, like, just, you know, are but they're like pumping out clips and like they're doing really well. And it's like, I like I'm comparing myself to that. Like, but at the same time, like that Australia trip came from a random DM from Zach at, you know, street carnage. He's like, come drive my car at halfway hangs. I was like, bet I'll be there. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I'm looking at flights right now. He's like, no fucking way. So it's like, you know, I think it's that like, you never know what you're going to get in your messages thing that like, gives you that like dopamine hit and that like you're like searching for it you know yeah yeah it's crazy it's you have to like you gotta like balance balance your ego with it too because it's like you, when you start to like get a bunch of followers you're like oh cool even if you don't admit it like it yeah it's all contributing to those hits of dopamine yeah and now it's like, again, like, like the pressure of it, the more people know you, the more people are seeing your stuff, the more like pressure you feel to keep do cool shit on there. Yeah. I mean, you see like a lot of these pages where they just like, they just repeat the formula because it's like it worked and then they like keep making the same reel pretty much over and over again. It's like, <sighs> I try to not like focus on the things that I don't like these days because I realize I've done that a lot and I can have like kind of a strong opinion on shit. Really? But there's so much annoying <laughs> shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I try not to put as much energy into the <laughs> negative things and focus more on just honing in on the things that I like and yeah. trying to like lead by example. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna clip that and put it on the internet. That's all right, dude. Let's, make talk, it, let's make talk about shit. some annoying shit and drifting. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't even need alcohol. Let's go. Um. Okay. You know what I hate? <laughs> <laughs> what do you hate, dude? So I always like. I think I always compare drifting to skateboarding, and maybe I've said this exactly on mm. your podcast before, but like, um, you know, like on the internet. You can be a total fucking poser in drifting. Like, you can make it look like you're hella good. Just, like, post photos of you drifting. Yeah. You can't do that as a skater. No. You can't get away with it. You have yeah. to post clips of you actually landing the trick. Yeah. Like, you can't, so you many, can't chong the straight on a skateboard. Dude, there's so many drift people that will, like, post them backing it into a corner, and then they, like, park it and cut the clip and they're like hashtag reverse entry like dude ooh, yeah that's like yeah that's like rolling up to a stair set and you kick flip down it and you like land with one foot on the board or like 
yeah. you don't land it and you cut the clip early. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah, drifting subjective and different styles and but like you didn't fucking land it. <laughs> don't post it. <laughs> and then a bunch of people are commenting like, oh bro, that was so sick, dude. Oh, so sideways. Like they didn't even do it. <laughs> Yeah, I think right. I is think they're. I think they're. Rever- no, I'm, I don't know. I'm is that a you. weird opinion? Like, no, you're. No, that shit is fucking lame. <laughs> like, actually, do it. <laughs> I agree. I agree. What else? <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think that. I think the backwards entry thing. I think there needs to be like a like information like i wanted to make like an informational video on like what a backwards entry is like someone fucking make it that knows what they're talking about please yeah yeah because i don't have time let's start editing another video that i won't finish for fucking five years there you go yeah i literally have like probably like six or seven videos that are halfway edited even older than the bmi video Yeah, I just like yeah, I lose steam sometimes, and I'm like not very organized. No, me either. <laughs> just doing these podcasts is like hard. Yeah, I imagine there's like there's a lot of well, you're good with like electronics and this kind of equipment, but there's a lot of shit involved. Yeah, even just this shitty production. I mean, the shit like Benson showed me that he got and like all their latest stuff. Like, yeah, you know? they do a lot more like editing and stuff. On yeah, theirs. yours is pretty raw yeah which i think people appreciate yeah we raw out here bro but i'm gonna spend some money and make the video better so that i can chop up clips and put them on social media because that's what you have to do to appease the fucking dude i'll even chop up some clips for you with all the spare time i have (laughs) (laughs) sick i can't wait to get them in four years uh i get it though that's fair I get it. I'm just going to let it like do its thing. I don't think it's going to stop recording. I hope. Yeah, I mean, the camera is still recording, right? No, it's, it's on the computer. Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah, it's just screensaver. I don't know. I don't know why it keeps fucking doing that. Dude, fix it. <sighs> what do you want me to talk about while you. Hey there, deviants. Are you wondering what I got on? Because you're creeping on my fucking vibe are you looking for the heatest hot flame fire fucking flame you've ever seen in your goddamn life are you trying to walk through the mall and have the dude that works at zoomies chase you down to ask you where you got your hoodie from man you need some heat maker gear man you don't just need to buy knuckles i mean get those too i'll buy 10 pairs but like sweatshirts hats they got the animal style hoodies the original logo on the on the goodest blanks, the super nice blanks I use. Adam LZ is gonna definitely order a new one. You know, he wears his on the channel. Name drop. <laughs> um, anyway, you want the coolest shit in the game? You know where to get it. Heatmaker.com or something. I don't even know the website. Just look look it up on Instagram or whatever. It's link in the description. There we go. That's what I'm supposed to say. There's no discount code. Get it while it's hot. Get it, heat maker. Fucking get your shit. Look good. Tell your annoying Gen Z cousin when he asks where you got your fucking drip from that it's sold out. Tell him fucking I sent you somehow. I don't know how you do that, but whatever. Anyway, there you go, Julian. How's that ad? Did I kill it? (laughs) Oh, God. We fucking gooch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like in between fucking yeah, half time show. <laughs> oh fuck, that's yours. <laughs> Sick. Give me the one with the give me the one with the glitter on it. I love having a nice fruit. I want to talk about what I don't like in drifting. Yeah. Don't fucking fake your driving. Don't fake your driving. You heard it here from Julian. If you have to cut the backy because you 
because you didn't make it, don't post it. I'm probably like I don't think anyone listening to this would want would do that. I'm probably like overly critical critical of my own driving like even when it's a run that's good i'll still be like picking apart things that could have been better but i feel like if you don't do that you'll get stagnant like you won't continue pushing your driving if you think it's the shit i definitely said that before on here yep i'm gonna say it every time yeah always think you suck (laughs) my number one clip is that the number one clip? Yeah, well, I only put out like four. <laughs> I have a spreadsheet with like probably like a hundred clips that I want to make, and I'm just like too lazy to like edit them. I'm not lazy. I'm just I don't have, I don't know. My my job. Don't is, say you don't have time. I do have time. It's just where like where do I spend it? You know. So like. No, I get it. My my job is on the computer, so like when I get home, the last thing I want to do is like sit there and like edit but you know i'll sit on fucking instagram for that's exactly yeah that's what i was gonna say the only reason i said that is because i've been even noticing lately how much fucking time i waste yeah on the internet and like i used to be actually doing productive stuff on the internet like back when we used to post all the time and it would actually like contribute to the growth of the team and shit like yeah now I'm just scrolling through bullshit. Yeah. Like a fucking workout chick, dude. <sighs> Instagram explore page is dangerous, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just like cats and steaks and butt cheeks. <laughs> and incomplete and they know, backies. They know what you like. No, I don't see any fucking incomplete backies in my explore page. I don't like that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, if you do an incomplete backy, there's nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. Yeah. But just, you know, say it. Like, oh, this could have been better. <laughs> I posted you know one I mean? and I was Keep like, ran out of speed. And then like a lot of people were like, this is fire. And I was like, I didn't make it. Oh, my God. This is going to be hard to eat. Yeah, I mean, I guess. A part of it is those people that go, this is fire. They don't really know what they're looking at. But that, I mean, it's not their fault because it still excites them. But yeah, I mean, it looks cool. Yeah. But I think it's the people that do continue to post stuff like that. They feed off of those comments. They're like, oh, maybe that was really sick. Right? Yeah. I mean, we're all just looking for validation at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. Not all of us, but I mean, it is like, humans everyone is to a certain extent yeah like how much are you living off of that and that's like something that i've been trying to figure out is how do i how do i have like a healthy level of validation how do i like how do i how do i have like fuck what am i trying to say i don't know man like you end up thinking about like you know Am I, am I, you know, I I feel like there's, I feel like there's like, it is somewhat common for people to get addicted to like what the reaction is going to be on the internet of what they're doing instead of just doing the thing that they're doing. And I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where like people send me clips and media and shit from events. I'm like, I just like never even get around to posting them because it's like either I like don't feel like the driving was good enough or. I just don't I, I'm I, I've gotten to the point where like I'm more worried about the next event and driving and getting better than I am how people like see my clips. But I mean, like, I mean, if you get like a fire one, you're like, OK, like, yeah, but yeah, it's it's all about but balance. Like you have to post some of the clips. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, mean, I guess you don't have to. Yeah. It's all like. It just depends on what level you're trying to do it. And if you give a shit if other people see it or not, but you know, like at this point, part of the pressure I think for us is like, I probably never admitted that we have any like influence on drifting just until recently. Like it's the amount of messages we get and people that come up to you and are like, 
you know, I started drifting because of you or I'm building this because of you. It's like, it's crazy, dude. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah, it's just about keeping that balance of not letting, like just, yeah, I don't know, letting that fuel you. In the right way. In the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The messages I get about the podcast definitely fuel like me being motivated to put episodes out and it's like i might just be like one dude who's like hey like i got a, i got a youtube comment yeah you showed the other day that it was, was just like was dude's sick. going through a hard time and like loves the podcast and it's like helping him like get back into and i get messages like that every once in a while and it's like that that's more motivating than anything because it's like having an impact on the community and individuals who are like like need you know like you're you're making people's lives better you know which is you know I, yeah i mean that that should be like that's a good dopamine hit i think yeah <laughs> in the right dosage yeah yeah you, you can't let that get to your head you're like i'm yeah. out here saving people you know it's like but it's nice to hear you know like it's nice to know that you're and like with the drive, like the, like when you have those interactions, it's like, hey, you like you got me into drifting. Drifting's like does all you know gives me purpose. Like that's fucking huge. Well, yeah, and it's also like if you think about the people that inspired you, you know, I wish I could tell Nauki that. You know what I mean? Like without the old burst videos and stuff, like there would be no animal style. Mm -hmm. So it's like. yeah those the people who inspired us are so important so it's crazy to think that we're able to inspire people but if you think about it that way there's people just getting into it and if they see us and it inspires them that's fucking sick like i'm honored to be able to do that but that yeah and that adds to the pressure of wanting to do better and post clips of the best driving i can yeah do, like, that's the biggest thing is like and back. still picking it apart and saying what i can improve on yeah yeah just i don't know I, I keep going back to it but it's like a lead by example thing that's like yeah what, like what do you you know you can only you can only do so much you can't really like guide everyone you know but like if you change someone's perspective on driving or what can be done or like how things can be done that's another thing about not focusing on the negative stuff that I've realized more in recent years, like focusing on the negative and pointing out the bad shit. It doesn't do anything like people don't respond to that. Well, you know what I mean? They maybe used to back in the day, back in the forum days, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. had to go hard on people. Yeah, and it was helpful, I guess. I, it's not these days. The culture is different. Like you have to just. People are gonna go against what you tell them to do, you know. So if they're doing some shit you don't like, and you tell them, they're just gonna be like, "Oh well, fuck that guy," you know. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah, you just gotta. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do I? I don't know. Yeah. It's constantly questioning everything myself forever. Like I have these ideas. But do they make sense? I don't fucking know. It's at the end of the day, we're just drifting. It's like Yeah. We're doing the silly thing with fucking old cars and It's crazy how big drifting has become and how different it is in different regions. That's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, too. Like yeah. Even within the United States, I think people from outside the U.S. don't realize how big it is and how different drifting is Like, yeah. from here to you know the midwest or yeah. uh the east coast like the attitude like just the the outlook on drifting the way people think about it is even way different yeah 
and there's a, obviously there's a bunch of overlap within all of it because it all stems from the same shit but it's pretty interesting yeah With that being said maybe i'm biased but i feel like norcal has a sick drift community yeah like people are very like and it hasn't always been this way with everyone. You know, there's been beefs. Like, there is everywhere. But I feel like, <laughs> for the most part, people are really respectful. And, uh, like, people are willing to willing to give props where they're due, you know, from all different lanes of the sport. It's just cool. I don't, it's not like that everywhere. Yeah. I think the community itself is I don't know the more the more people that I'm meeting like as I go other places or like I I think that there's like a lot of like I think there's like a lot of like-minded people who just love fucking drifting and like that's what it's about and that's the majority and I think there's just like I don't know again like you go back to the fucking internet's weird like there's there's just there are people in like cer- certain locations that like and that's not to shit on anyone because I think every uh region kind of has their own strengths yeah and weaknesses for sure. yeah know? um I don't know. should I say examples is that too is that too controversial <laughs> I don't fucking care yeah. honestly all right uh like i don't know something i've noticed now that aaron's been on the team like he's mentioned that and I, it it kind of seems like since he's been on animal style he doesn't really get much credit for being the sick driver that he is up there it's almost like people think of him as competition rather than mm. you know maybe that's just from an outside perspective but just from talking with aaron it kind of seems like that. Even people within, you know, the kind of Japan style driving. I mean, he definitely gets his props, I think, but it's hard yeah. to. Yeah. I don't know. I I feel like. I feel like um, anyone that's kind of like. Doing the sort of driving that we're into, like, you know, there's people all over the world that are kind of trying to carry on the like modern japan drift style Mm -hmm. it's not fucking kansai style (laughs) it's japan style like the high front low rear like kind of getting taller fat tires going really fast that's japan style it's not kansai style yeah i mean there's yeah there's like that's another thing i hate (laughs) (laughs) i mean kansai has a style but like yeah People just think every Japan car is Kansai style. Anyway, where was I? Uh, <laughs> You're just ripping it, ripping it apart. <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm not going hard. Okay. I don't think. No, not really. Um, but yeah, I think of like anyone kind of in that space is like we're all on the same team. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think of like other drifting teams as competition to animal style. I think like we're all we're all in this shit together. Yeah. Unless it's like in a comp specifically and we're battling against each other then it's a battle yeah you know? but even like we never we never take teams in seriously no <laughs> i don't take any competition seriously fuck you dude <laughs> fuck you you fuck you and your no third gear and beat me at fucking medford there was definitely a point in time where i used to like get nervous in competition yeah i mean i pro- i still do a little bit but I don't know. I guess just maybe it's because I've like sucked in competition so many times and like taken myself out or yeah. fucked up and been disappointed. Now I just like expect that and I'm just like, whatever happens, happens. Maybe that's what it is. Hmm. That's the mindset that I go into comps with now. And it seems to work out a lot better because if your car breaks or you fucking dive in on somebody or you blow off the track or whatever like it's like oh well at least i got to at least i got to do one round yeah like sam beat me and i was like fucker but like i wasn't but you were okay with it because he also beat me 
I was okay with it. I was okay with it because I he was on my shit. He was he was ripping that day. He was on fire. Yeah, that there's was only sick. there's only a couple people out there that I get salty that I, if I lose to them, you know. I'm not gonna name any names, but Austin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say it. Yeah, hey, whatever. Yeah. I don't think you should get salty. I'm going to fucking get his ass, dude. Uh, Austin is a fucking insane driver. There's no reason to be salty. I'm going to get his ass. He's one of those guys that just like... I don't know. He pushes really hard all the time. It's... it's uh, uh, three events a in year. In other people's cars, too. Like He doesn't really give a fuck. But he doesn't, mark, doesn't seem like he messes other people's cars up. He, some people just have fucking raw drifting talent. And yeah, some I people wouldn't have know. to work way harder at it. Yeah. Whatever, dude. You're driving really sick lately. Thanks, dude. I've been, I've been working really hard at it. Yeah, it shows. Love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, that for me. There was a couple times at Grange when you were like up in my shit and i was like ah every time palmer gets this close to me he fucking smashes me so i was trying to go super fast but you never i don't think you ever hit me Mm -mm. your chase game is leveled up yeah i always i always hit your wheel i learned not to do that because i i i definitely like blew up like four or five front wheels and i was like okay no more (laughs) no more front wheel to rear wheel i don't care about getting hit my shoulder has just been jacked yeah um from drifting actually Not something else. <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple incidents where it feels like my shoulder is like about to pop out of the socket. I need to push this heater away. It's <laughs> cooking my legs. Uh, uh, yeah. Yep. Take care of your body, people. You only get one. It's true. You only get one body for now until they, you know, download our consciousness and the robots and shit. Could be cool. Yeah, maybe. Then you Pretty just, scary. Then you just drift forever. You're like a cyborg with your own consciousness. We were down at the, the farm hanging out with the Luma boys the other night. And uh, we were playing with chat GPT. Yeah. That shit is crazy, dude. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. This is the third conversation I've had about it this week. Oh, really? Yeah. On the podcast? Nope. Oh. Just in real life? Uh, what did I say? They were like, think of anything. Tell it to tell you a story about something. And I was like, uh, what did I say? Tell me a story about a gorilla that could talk or something. And it, dude, it was like, a children's book about a gorilla that could talk. I was like, this, this is crazy. Yeah. My friend is like using it to do like a lot of his shit for his job now. <laughs> He's just like, give me like build this out like here. And then he'll like go through and find all the weird shit, but like saves him like a gang of time. We're not going to know what's real pretty soon. I feel like that's coming up pretty quick. Yeah. Pretty soon, people are going to be able to edit in them making the backies. <laughs> I, I quit, dude. <laughs> Chat GPT, make it look like I didn't straighten after this baggie. Give, make my car look like it's driving like cars from Mahon. Um, at that point, nothing's gonna like people are gonna want real experiences because like video is not gonna mean anything anymore. Because it, it can all be faked. So like, what's the point? I know. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh. <laughs> AI. What, what are you what are you happy about in drifting? Like what do you like what's 
like well, i'm happy about way more in drifting than i am mad about things in drifting just just for the record that's good um it's just i don't know it's sick to see what it's turned into yeah it's like when we started it was nobody knew what it was yeah and now you could literally go anywhere in the world yeah and go experience it yeah and like the majority of people know what it is at this point yeah even if they're like oh you mean like tokyo drift yeah or ken block or whatever but at least like at least they like get the concept rpkb yeah yeah, your post about how you didn't realize like how much the Ken Block stuff like affected your like early days. Like I, I thought about that. And I was like, yeah, like because, yeah, because like, he wasn't like someone that I thought about often. You know, obviously, like he does amazing shit, and the Jim Connor videos were super like legendary. But uh, yeah, when I thought back about it, like I had that. That first Jim Connor video, I played it so many times. Like he was like putting that Subaru into the wall on that little on that corner and smashing it up and like it was gnarly. Yeah. It was kinda like you know, the same shit that got me hyped on Team Burst. Just like yeah. it looks like he's having so much fun and not giving a fuck about the car. Yeah. It was super inspiring. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Crazy how many people we know that were like friends with him too and yeah, how good of a guy he seemed to be, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Time is limited. Yeah, it is. You never know what the fuck is going to happen. No. You got to get it while you can a little bit. Like, I I think about that a lot, like all the stuff that we're doing, like, I'm definitely pushing a lot more than I used to, because it's like, you never, you never know when, when gas powered cars are going to be banned and everyone's going to have to switch to electric. Like, would I even want to drift anymore? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I think I want to move to a different country. Damn. I don't want to drive an electric trip car <laughs> yeah right like part of the fun is the engine sound yeah yeah speaking of that <laughs> another thing <laughs> fucking drives me crazy vqs no <laughs> i mean yeah they sound like shit but <laughs> sorry guy like all those the screen grabs of Naoki's conversation about his favorite engine and how he said V8s are his favorite and all these people are like, see, but your SR boy is crying right now. He doesn't mean that his favorite engine is like a stock LS. It's just like, Bleh. he's talking about like a super gnarly one, like his D1 car where it sounds like angry and really fucking rowdy, which is sick as fuck. Mm, high revving yeah push rod v8 yeah because like in the same conversation Detroit? Sorry. he's talking about how like there weren't any good exhaust manifolds for the jay-z so he never liked the sound of a jay-z you know what i mean like till he heard mine okay <laughs> sick flex <laughs> no he didn't say shit about it i'm <laughs> kidding uh but yeah, it was just funny. Yeah. People like to grab onto that one. He said he loves V8s. Yeah, he likes like really nasty sounding V8s, not like your junkyard fucking 5.0 swap. <laughs> Nobody's into oh, that. <laughs> Are people even doing those still? I think that kind of died. I don't know. Probably. Hopefully. Yeah. I mean, look. 
can we add a little positivity in <laughs> if you're driving really sick with that setup was that the right face for the thumbs up <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i'm all for it <laughs> if you drive sick i don't give a shit what engine you have yeah me either yeah that's all i guess yeah i but they, but they made that they made that they made that video to be clickbaity. It was yeah, like they, they, it was controversial. Now he's talking about V8s and fucking blah, blah, blah. Like, I mean, I don't really know why they the made truth the is though. Most people that have V8s drive boring. Damn. Why do you think that is? Um, I think just all the torque makes it easier to keep the tire spinning. Yeah, at lower just, RPM or anywhere in the power band. Laziness. Yeah, because it's you, like you don't you don't have to clutch kick. You can and you can go in slower and still be able to leave the corner with the tire spinning. Even if they're driving fast, yeah, it's still just usually, you know, the the throttle work is usually just sounds boring. Yeah, and the throttle work is how is part of how you get the car to transition fast. Like it's not all just steering input. It's like how much like grip are you allowing the car to have and how are you like getting that to load to be able to transition quickly? Yeah, and a lot of guys with torquey V8s will just like leave it in a higher gear. Right. Through the whole course where in a spot they could downshift and make some more noise and make it a little more exciting, but they don't have to. Yeah. So they'll just leave it and smoke the tires up. It's like Well yeah, and the car doesn't transition quickly when it's the fucking wheel speeds like thirty, forty miles an hour over how fast the car is going. And Right, yeah, well yeah, depending on how much grip the car has. And yeah. All that. But yeah. And it's just yeah, it's just the truth. Like it's not I don't hate on V eights at all, but most people that drive V8s tend to drive kind of boring. There's people, there's exceptions V8s are to fucking that. rip, yeah. There's, yeah, there's people who drive sick with V8s. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you saw Nauki in the fucking Drift Week S13, like, thrown in backies at Muscleman. Yeah, that car was pretty boring. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no offense, I know how much work it takes to put together car for someone to come drive so props for that but yeah it was just like hella quiet yeah you like loud cars i like loud cars even if it's a fucking ear shattering fucking EQ, goddamn. i want it to be loud yeah. <laughs> so annoying <laughs> hate it <laughs> all the fucking clips of me chasing you at abs like just you're like oh god i don't have to clutch kick in this car at all yeah with 265s with 265 yeah i just do it because it sounds cool it's more exciting and it flicks the car faster too yeah i don't have to clutch kick anymore but you do it but i do it yeah i was clutch kicking the shit out of that dead pedal in the in Zaxi 36 in Australia. Sorry, dude. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Blue M50. Hey, you know it happens. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in my. I keep saying I'm in my Julian era. I'm going to different countries and blowing up cars. Yeah, sorry guys. Man, I want to go drive Jeff's S15 again. That's like the best car I've ever driven. I just posted something on Facebook about how not very many people would let you beat on their like 600 horsepower s15 for two days straight and want nothing in return yeah and you blew the turbo on it like oh yeah 45 probably, minutes probably then. maybe had less than 500 horsepower that second day because it was like a random yeah it was random like, old turbo yeah it was a random whole set a bit. yeah like like diesel turbo that someone just had at the track that car's nuts dude yeah <laughs> yeah Good job, Jeff. Yeah. He's down in Atlanta at 
trip to the pond right now and i'm so jealous i want to drive mid pond that track looks so fun shout out papa stone back have you has he not been on here we're gonna do one this week he said but we'll see if that happens now you're on the spot jeff yeah it's crazy you haven't done one with him yet yeah there's a lot of people i want to get on here it's just i suck at scheduling and uh my life's been really like sporadic lately and it's been like kind of hard to like be like okay i'm gonna do podcasts during after work and whatever like my life's changed a bunch and so yeah what's been going on with you man talk about life the stuff you've talked about already um you filling in your your viewers on your personal uh, life and growth uh, i've like i've talked about it a little bit but like okay yeah like mid last year literally like right after we all went to evergreen i i ended a seven-year relationship um which included me having to move out and say goodbye to your dog yeah that one fucking that one hurts like sorry. a lot. Yeah, sorry to okay. bring that up. It's okay. Um, yeah, I got like a fucking Instagram like memory yesterday of like him bringing me like a shirts tucked in glove. <sighs> that fucking that that cut deep. But uh, yeah, it was just like I I had to make a change in my life, and I. It was like something that I fought for a long time and, you know, like I hope she's like good and find somebody that's like better for her. And, you know, I'm doing the same. And, uh, but yeah, that was a big life change. Like I haven't lived on my own. So I was like, I'm, you know, I have my own place. I'm like learning what the, what it's like to like be the only person responsible for everything in a house and like make sure it's clean and make sure i fucking you know like not that i didn't clean my place like we were very like i did my own laundry and shit we were very like separate um that's so weird (laughs) yeah Yeah, i mean you guys had an interesting relationship yeah i mean there was like it was that way for whatever reason but um yeah but yeah you get you get comfy and it can be hard to make a change even when you know it's probably for the best yeah i mean i like struggle with like that's what i always was talking about last year like i'm going through like i'm like dealing with shit or whatever and i didn't put anything out because i was i don't know i did a couple episodes and they were good but they i could tell that i was just like out of it you know like i wasn't like myself i wasn't i was i was like really forcing myself like uh even emceeing final bout like i would it just happened like a month or two before that And I'm like in Chicago and I should be like having a good time hanging out with everybody. But I like I wasn't really there, you know, like I I I had to like really go to a place to like find the energy to like be entertaining on the mic. And I did a good job and I took it seriously. But like. I don't know. Yeah. And with that came like some struggles at work and, you know, like I've spent a lot of the last like three years trying to get to a better like mental place where i'm yeah i don't know i i I deal with you know struggles and shit just like anybody else and uh it's been it's been like kind of a long journey and it's not over it's definitely not over but never over yeah drifting's definitely been the escape and that's like where i've put a lot of my energy because it's like You know, I can go to the shop and like turn my brain off or like, you know, you know, while you're drifting, you're not thinking about life or, you know, where you're going to be in a year, you know, what what life looks like. And. uh, I've used it as a distraction and like with that has come like a lot of progress in it. Which is a good thing, like at least I had that, you know. At least you have like, like the people who don't like. I can see why people get into drugs or whatever if they need like an escape, a distraction. Yeah, you know? and like not just drug, you know, like like 
in like a damaging sense, you know? Yeah. Drifting is a pretty good drug. It's pretty expensive. Yeah. But it gets you high. Yeah, <laughs> it does. But then you crash. Yeah. Like any other thing. But yeah. Yeah. Are you talking about like physically crash or like mentally crash? Both. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, imagine how many people drifting is that for, you know, an escape from the normal bullshit of life that drags you down. I think, yeah, I mean, you have to be a little off to find to like want to do it, right? Like I've always said, if you're going to go like try drifting, like you're already breaking laws, you know, you're you're already like kind of doing some outlaw shit, you know, not not really like on a major scale but you know i guess not everyone like goes to the track for the first i mean you kind of can now but i would say like people have started early on like if you wanted to see if you were gonna try and go to an event like you're at least gonna like try and do donuts somewhere or whatever you know? and like you kind of have to be like a little unhinged to like go rip donuts like there's a lot of people in this world who are like you like even the thought of owning a manual car versus like going and like kicking the clutch to see what happens mm-hmm. or like pulling the e-brake on the freeway or whatever. <laughs> don't, don't have me with my new civic. <laughs> it's, been, it's been raining. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's a 2000, it's a 2000 civic. I'm not balling out here, but I've been acquiring some vehicles. Um, anyway, whatever. So like, yeah, I've, I found like a lot of I put a lot of effort into like trying to be a better person like Julian was talking about earlier and like you were talking about earlier like how do you yeah how 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 am I perceived like am I living for other people am I living for myself like what is the line like do you you know like what's the line of like selfishness and like setting boundaries and taking care of yourself, you know, like, you know, too far one way, like, yeah, you're being a selfish piece of shit, but like too far the other way, like you're living for other people and that's not, not a good place to be. So like finding that balance, finding the balance of like work and like, what do, you know, where do I want to spend my time? Who do I want to spend my time with? You know, shit like that. A lot of, a lot of introspection and, I do, you know, maybe in the last like couple months feel like I'm on the other end of like where I was at. Like, I don't know. I I like Googled existential crisis. I was like, what is a fucking existential crisis? And I Googled it and it was like, I was like, oh shit. Yeah, I'm having one of those for sure. <laughs> like last year, like I was, I was, at, I was staying at Jason's house for a minute and that was cool. Like when I was, you know, kind of like out trying to like figure out what I was going to do next. I like stay with Jason. I stay with Aaron, stay with my, my boy, Kyle and Tahoe. Like I, I just, I, it was not, you came here a bit, but not for long. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was bouncing bouncing around around, like, and it was nice to like every place that I left, people were like, you can stay longer. Like, you know, like, I mean, yeah. When you're, dude, when you're going through a breakup, like there's, nothing more you'd want to do than not be in the house where you're yeah dealing with that and just be around other people yeah i totally i miss my fucking dog though miss my fucking dog and i will get one yeah mark my words i'm going to i just that was that was a decision i had like in the last like couple weeks i was like i can't do it anymore I, i need one like I, I had the realization I'm like not gonna get to see him again. So there's a lot of there's a lot of reasons why, and I understand, and it's like it's not her fault. It's mine, but it does suck. Yeah. Unfortunately, like having the dog tie you guys together in any way is just you can't fucking do that. When you yeah. break up, you gotta break up. Yeah. Yeah. It sucks, but you just gotta you gotta move on. I didn't I didn't realize like 
I didn't really like, cause I never, I never had pets. Like I always wanted a dog when I was a kid. My parents like, fuck no. But, um, I did like, Julian's always been a fucking like animal person. And I like, I, you, I've always wondered like, yo, I like, I get it, but also like, I don't really get it. And then like, once I had, once Bodie was in my life, I was like, oh, like I understand like why people are the way they are with their pets. Like I fucking, I was all in like, you know what I mean? So it is what it is. You'll feel the same way about your next dog. Yeah. So you you should get one sooner than later. <laughs> yeah. I just got to figure out like the living situation, all that being alone and having a dog and trying to drift and travel and mm-hmm. adding another layer of, layer of complexity to life. Like, yep. That's the thing, man. Like it's hard. It's hard enough to do this stuff without all the other like complications in life and like that's i mean that's why the z has been all the events and the fucking (laughs) yeah i mean the amount of uh times i get asked how's the s13 (sighs) fuck man it's a lot (laughs) yeah and if you had a dollar for every time you got asked you'd be able to buy another i would have a few hundred dollars probably yeah (laughs) I think I'd probably have a few hundred dollars. Um, yeah, but I'm really fucking glad I got this car. Yeah. I actually love driving this car. It drives really good. Yeah. It's just, you know, it's not as cool. Yeah. And when I drive with you guys, it's just, you know, even with the nitrous, it's not enough. It needs I more. mean, I personally fucking love it because I get to just, I get to fucking bully you and it's, the most amazing feeling because like i don't know what the first fucking nine years of being on the i'm i'm coming up on yeah 20 2013 was when i got on the team so 10 years it's crazy damn uh for the for most of it it was just fucking julian like dooring me every time we drove i don't think i'm gonna be ditching you that crazy in my s13 now dude you're fast yeah the car is a lot faster too than it ever has been. Yeah. Yeah, your car rips. Yeah. I got an E36. <laughs> yeah, you do. That's back there somewhere. Uh, and another Z. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> We're probably going to be this might be the last uh pod at the Animal Castle. Ooh, fucking dropping the ball, bomb. Bomb. Bomb drop. Sick. Good words. Are you sure this is the first sober one? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how much longer we're going to live here. Yeah, you got a lot of shit going on. Yeah, so I bought another car. <laughs> <laughs> We're over here worrying, like, what the fuck are we going to do if we have to move out of here? We have so many cars and we need so much space. Buy his oh, car. a good deal on a Z. <laughs> no, I was actually looking for doors and fenders and a front bumper to replace on this thing. And this dude on Marketplace was parting out a Z. I was like, how much for this and this and this? And then he gave me a price. I was like, what's up with the motor? Because I've kind of been thinking it would be a good idea to have a spare DQ. Yeah. Just because it's been ticking like with the gnarliest sound since i got it yeah even though it's totally fine yeah that's why that's why when you told me you're adding nitrous like the day before we left i'm just like that's the most julian shit ever like it does not get more julian than that like motor sounds fucking garbage like let's add nitrous and you're like i need to keep up with now he's fucking v8 in there <laughs> <laughs> uh so anyways i'm happy you did it because the fucking video that came from it is one of the fucking best things that's ever come from yeah anything 100 percent. it was so worth shout it. out fucking shane that shit is so funny shout out matt field he actually gave me some good tips on the nitrous and yeah he, th- he was like dude do it he's like you will not regret it and he was like giving me I, yeah i sent him the kit and was like what do you think and he's like oh yeah it looks like it has most of the shit do it, make sure you do a wet shot this and that so yeah he pushed me to do it. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, so this dude on Marketplace, he's got the Z. How much for the fenders, doors, bumper? I'm like, what's up with the motor? He's like, uh, I haven't. It hasn't started in like four years. Uh, I'm like, what? Why? He's like, oh, I pulled it out of my G35 and threw it in this car. I was gonna build a drift car and just never, never got around to it. I'm like, okay. He's like, you want to just take the whole car? I'm like, uh. No, it's like thirteen hundred. Like, does it have a trans six speed? Yep, I'll come get it right now. Damn. So I hooked up the trailer so and drove out to Napa, and now I have a deals full parts car with a potentially good motor rev up DE. Sick rev up. Do those sound better? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So you might be moving shit's changing rapidly yeah there's so much so many things going on at once it's so hard to like stay on top of super d super d fell off so hard it's it sucks i mean it's not gone i'm trying like i'm not done by any means like i feel like i've only just started as much shit as it seems like we've done there's so much more I want to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just things have kind of slowed down for a bit, but um, coming back. The plan I want to have all these cars working. Like I want to do more than I've ever done. Yeah, you know, it's just a matter of getting the motivation up and having the discipline to stay on it but i'm working on it yeah i mean you're you've been like i don't know you sprinted at drifting for 15 years and then the last like couple you're still driving like often but Mm, it's like i wouldn't say often well yeah there's definitely a point where it was not very often (laughs) Yeah. The least I'd ever seen you drive since I met you, which because you had to borrow cars and. I mean, that's I've done that the whole time I've been <laughs> drifting, like I've been really fortunate to have friends that would loan me their cars and loan me their trailers. and Like I've done this very jank and very budget like forever. I always have. Yeah. Yeah, everyone says they're broke. I feel like we've talked about this before too, but yeah, everyone says they're broke. Everyone's idea of what broke is is different. Is different. Yeah, but like, and it's like, yeah, I could get a better job, go to school. Nope, I'm not gonna do that. It's never been my thing. But you know, that's why I have things on the side. Like I'm. I also feel so bad for like everyone that hypes up heat maker so much. It's such like, there's so much fucking potential yeah, for it to be such a good thing. And so many people all over like hype it up and they'll like rock the logo in their livery without even like me giving them anything. It's so fucking cool. Like, yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah. I appreciate it so much. All you people out there. I'm trying to, <laughs> I don't know. Was a good trying to up. deliver, trying to make it up to you guys. Cuz that yeah, I mean that helps to keep drifting. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's weird like initially when you first start selling merch. I think the culture's changed a bit, but like back then it was like you feel really weird about promoting shit that you're selling. But like it feels weird. It does, yeah. But if there's a demand for it and people want to support you, give them, give it to them. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've, that's something I've always like struggled with is trying to stay on top of putting things out there for people, but also not shove it down their throat. I think you do a decent job of it. Yeah, but I probably am too self-conscious about it, so I don't do as well as I could. 
because of that. But that's fine. I'd rather have that than to be too pushy. But yeah, that's a whole other thing. Keeps it cool. Yeah, I think it does. These days, people like respect people. Uh, people are looking for what's the word? Some it's like genuine. Starts with an A. Whatever. <laughs> Words. Uh, authenticity. Ah. People are looking for authenticity. Because it's like, I mean. <sighs> for sure, yeah. And you got to look. If you're going to put stuff out there, take some pride in it. and. Yeah. If you're authentic and, you know. I don't know. It's just like anything. Like people can smell if you're doing things for just for money or whatever. Like make your shit worth the hype. Yeah. Products, your driving, everything. Yeah. And the driving hypes the products. If you're really, really going for it and doing cool shit, people want to support you. Yeah. And that's that's amazing. Yeah. If it weren't for that, I wouldn't have been drifting so long. What people supporting? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like the support with the There's a lot of people who do it without any support for years and years. Yeah. Props to those people. Yeah. That's serious dedication, no matter how you do it, but yeah. It really people supporting us and hyping us up and yeah it's buying our stuff it means fucking world to me it means the world to all of us like aaron doing like just getting you know him doing his like flash vm stuff and making merch and like it's it's a lot of effort it's not like you know we're not not all of us are good at making brands and branding and jason like doing his own thing and yeah we all kind of have our yeah our things on the side i watched uh i watched an american saga which is like the story of the wu-tang clan and like like rizza made it so that like they can be signed as a group but in the contract they can all have their own individual like labels like record deals so like they're like a group but they can also be like their own entity and that's how they like set it up and i was like damn that's hella cool like you know like having everybody on the team kind of like have their own thing that they do is like not only like helped each person out, but it like helps the team out because it like someone might find, you know, Flash through Goodest or Goodest through Flash, like or you know, Jason, you know, Jason's baby built stuff and Luke's like doing his thing and Heatmaker and it's like you know, it it's all like this like cohesive thing and everybody's like supporting and helping each other out but yeah it's kind of nice because it gives you like an avenue to like support each person if you want like yeah it, it goes a long way for us like it definitely does for sure and that's why you should all subscribe to my only fans <laughs> i didn't buy all this gear just to do podcasts i'm also going to be clapping Fapping. cheeks on the internet fapping on the internet <laughs> It's only six bucks a month, six ninety nine a month, six ninety a month, six ninety nine, some some with sixty nine in it, or whatever. I wish I could have the drive to add that into all the things I'm doing. Like, you could make hella money doing that shit these days. Yeah, dude, you got abs, bro. You have a lot of you have a lot of dude fans. I yeah. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, if you're a dude trying to make OnlyFans, like your your targets like gay dudes, dudes for sure. Yeah, you, absolutely. You, you'll stack money. Yeah, and like maybe like three girls that like wanted to see you naked in high school, and they'd be like, yeah. I'll check it out. Uh, I was wondering what he was packing, you know. And then they subscribe and they're disappointed. <laughs> I would do it, honestly. I just don't have time. 
<laughs> that's just an excuse though because if i just spent less time scrolling through instagram i could probably you know put out a fap video here and there and stack some chips <laughs> you and phoebe have been on that for a long time we'll ever since i met it, you guys but... you guys like talked about doing some kind of thing you know she tried to sell her underwear yeah didn't go anywhere yeah we talked about it on the podcast that's right definitely yeah. check that one out it's probably one of the funniest ones ever yeah yeah phoebe's funnier than me for sure sometimes a lot of the time <laughs> she's better at roasting people yeah yeah you just don't want to be on the other end of it if it's like a mean roast mm. Phoebe's, yeah. Phoebe's fiery yeah but it's out of love usually yep yeah I think that's why we work. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to have that balance. Yeah, you need your shooter. Like, my steaks are cooked wrong. <laughs> he's like, I got you, babe. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> hey, bro. He said he wanted medium rare. Does this look like <laughs> fucking medium rare? <laughs> <laughs> I no, actually, she, she actually likes when I order food for her. Yeah. Well, it's and like she a, always jokes like, and the lady will have <laughs> <laughs> a salad. Nah. Sexes. Sorry. The fuck, dude. I know. <laughs> Wait, she says the lady will have for you, or you will say, and the lady will have for her. She jokes that I should say that for her. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Maybe tonight. It's our anniversary. So we're gonna yeah, go out yeah, yeah. get some food. Maybe how many how that. many years now? Seventeen, I think. Seventeen years? We've been together? Damn dude, you guys are almost legal. Like, cause eighteen. I don't know. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. a fucking dumb joke. It's like almost half of our lives. That's crazy. It's also crazy to like have friends that you can say have been your friend for 20 plus years. Remember back in the day when your parents would be like, oh, this is my friend of 20 years. Like, fuck, 20, 20 years. years. Yeah. What? Like, I have hella friends that I've been friends with 20 years now. Yeah. Yeah. We've been it's crazy. We've yeah. been friends for 13 plus. Maybe less. 12. 12. Yeah, like yeah, I think that. Nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2010, 2011, I think. That's when I started drifting. That's crazy. Back when I was a media boy. That video you made of me is still sick. Yeah, I, I watched it I recently. I cringe at my interview, but... Yeah, you look high as fuck, and you aren't. I don't think I was high. You weren't. Your eyes are just hella but man, glossy. I look, I look young. Yeah. It's crazy when you, like... You think, oh, I don't even look like I've aged that much. And then I see a video like that and I'm like, oh shit. I watched the I watched the ASB team tandem video that Cotto, Brandon Cotto made. And like I saw myself in there and I was like, damn, I look so much better than I used to. <laughs> that facial hair was like not a good look. The way I had it then. I don't remember. It was like, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what works best for my facial hair, to be honest. Yeah, I'm liking the beard on you and me. Just we a couple out, fucking... We out here. <laughs> yeah. Beard life. My shit's just so, like, patchy right in here. So if I let it go too long, then it's, like, heavy here, big missing spot, and then heavy here. And if I, I cut like it too it. short, it looks super patchy. But like, right now, because I just trimmed it. And, like, in the video, it's going to look like I just have, like, fucking, like, a just big... Phallic, it's like same like, same spot as yeah, me. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Big phallic hair shape on my face. <laughs> Big hairy dick on your face. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good at cutting my own hair, though. I cut my own hair too. I've actually not been to a barber. Uh, know, maybe five, six times in my life. Sick. It's the back that's hard, but yeah, I got a little mirror, dude. 
be fucking chopping my shit. Sometimes I fuck it up. I'm like, ah, oh. all right, I'm gonna hat it up for a couple weeks and then fix it. But used- fifty bucks a month, dude. Especially in the city, fuck. I used to just rock the buzz, dude. My head was shaped weird as fuck. When I see <laughs> pictures of me back then. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> But yeah, I'm losing my hair. I'm getting some grays. We're getting old, dude. Dude, we're getting fucking old. It's cutting this, this line right here. It's scooting back. Yeah. It's crazy. One day you're just like, oh shit, I'm getting old. Yeah. I mean, we're not old, but. But you're yeah. like, I've peaked and I'm now, my body is now going the other way. Yeah. I think about that sometimes. Yeah. What can you do? Take care of yourself the best you can. Yeah. Fuck, it's important. It's crazy. People were always telling me about that kind of shit, and I was just eat whatever I want. I. <laughs> Have abs no matter what happens. Yeah, so I'm like, oh you, yeah, dude. I'm seven seven burritos a week. Hey, dude, I'm also shredded. I'm also constantly in pain. I would give up my abs to, for <laughs> my body to feel really good all the time. I'm sure there's somebody who'd trade you. I don't really know how that works, but yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's just like one day you're like, shit, I have to like stop eating Bad. garbage yeah some people can't at least at least you got the fucking discipline to do it you know hard it's I, not easy i have to i seriously it's crazy how sensitive i am to certain foods now i've been trying to figure it out like what exactly triggers the pain yeah because sometimes it takes a couple days and yeah. it's like it's really fucking hard to figure it out frustrating yeah i can't imagine but again these are just my problems <laughs> and they're in the grand scheme of things people have much bigger problems yeah so i'm doing all right i'm, I'm pretty pretty lucky for where i'm at could be worse it could always be worse yep I'm trying to look at it that way these days. There's, I definitely had some rough moments in the last couple of years. Yeah. Real rough. So are we going to finish the Sylvia or what? <laughs> yes. Cool. It's coming. I don't know if it's going to happen at this house. Yeah. So do you, can you get into that or? Yeah. I mean, our landlord is just not the most honest dude. We talked a little bit about, I mean, he told us he's like going through a divorce and he told us that he was maybe going to have to sell the house and, and he said, if you guys wanted to buy it, you know, I'd carry the note and we could make it happen. Like, hopefully this appraiser gives us a low, you know, a low estimate, wink, wink, like just yeah, hyping us up for it. And then when we were supposed to like meet up and talk about potentially buying it, he ghosted us. And then when we were driving back from ABS, my realtor buddy that I grew up with hit me up and said the house was for sale on like a, on a site where only realtors can see it at first. And he had like come into the house and took pictures with a photographer and like told us that he was just like coming up with an appraisal to counter his ex-wife's appraisal, which was just complete bullshit. He was like staging it to sell it. Fuck. And, uh, I mean, this house is completely out of our league. Yeah. Like we live on seven acres yeah. in the forest in a huge house with a, 
1200 square foot shop it's been like amazing and we pay nothing to live here so it's yeah. been a deal and we've dealt with all the problems you know we've had crazy roof leaks there were winters that we were you know had big coolers in our room catching the waterfalls like it was crazy and he just would half-ass fix it and it would just move the leak to somewhere else and just make it worse and he's just he's done a lot of illegal stuff but we've put up with it just because it was such a good deal and like we put up his paint booth and didn't even tell him yeah but that's just because we knew he wouldn't care like, yeah. he let me paint a car here before we even moved in huh so right before final bout special stage west at park yeah i painted the s14 in the tent where michael's car lives oh shit before we moved in here so i figured he wouldn't give a shit about this booth yeah and he's never even mentioned it but what's he gonna say like yeah dude you do all kinds of shady shit but anyway he put up the house for 2.1 million dollars Damn. Which anyone that comes and actually inspects this place is going to be like, no. Yeah. Get fucked. Yeah. Uh, the first appraiser said he'd be lucky to get 900000 So that's a big jump. Yeah. But either way, even 900000 is not like, not possible. even remotely possible. Yeah. So we had kind of been tossing the idea around of like, getting a fifth wheel camper just so we can put it anywhere for now but obviously we have stacks of cars and shit i don't know i don't know if that's gonna work even that like we need a lot of credit stuff i need to pay off and get my score back up before i can even think about that maybe sell a car or two i just keep stacking cars up and i don't ever sell them yeah <laughs> it's always crazy how many people I know that are just constantly buying and selling cars. I never let them go. I just stack them up. <laughs> yeah. I'm also kind of doing that. Yeah. But I mean, in some cases, that's a good thing. Like my Hachi. Yeah. I think it's worth hella money. I haven't touched it. Yeah. But uh, I need to. That's probably going to be a down payment on something. Yeah. As much as I really want to have it and drift it. The truth is it's not helping me reach my goals in drifting, you know, even if it's running and good to go. Like, right. This is my fucking Hachi. Yeah. I love them and I really, really want to drive it, but I'm not going to drive it hard. Yeah. And if I can't drive it super hard, there's no point. Yeah. I actually deal with that too. Like there's shit that I want to build or whatever. Like I have like this like dream build I want to do, but I'm like, but if I build that, like I can't, like I'm not going to drive it hard. So like, why make it a drift car? Yeah. You're going to be worried about fucking it up. Yeah. And for us, that's everything. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that would have worked for you a few years back, but I think now at the level you're at now, you want to fucking drive hard. It's yeah. not fun if you don't. It's not. Yeah, like all the damage on my car from the last three days. I'm like, what? I'll fix it. I don't care. Like, whatever. Like, it's just, they're just parts. Yeah. You know? Shout yeah. out, shout out Nerp Tech. He's sending me fucking control arms. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, it's just like, uh, I don't, ca I don't care. I was talking to, um, Fuck, what's his name? R RJ? RJ or RJ Tunes? The fucking His name's Jordan. I don't know. He's like the R RJ Tunes. I don't know. He's like from the East Coast, but he's like drifting like a newer M3 at, at Drift Week. And the car's sick, like whatever. But he like we like drove together. He rode with me and he was like, I just don't like he's like, yeah, I could probably fucking go throw it in like this and stuff but i like i just don't want to hurt my car that much and i'm like yeah it's a different it's a different approach but like i just don't like i'm not gonna go to the track and just enter slower because i don't want to hurt my car i remember the day that i realized that i don't 
really care anymore. It's liberating. It is, yeah. You're like, I don't give a fuck about how this thing goes home. Like, I just want to feel like I'm driving the way that I want to drive. I'm trying to think if I ever even was worried about my car. I don't think I, I don't think I, you I don't were. Think I was ever. I mean, I was. I remember. I just told you like a couple weeks ago. Like, I I used to think that you were like purposely like evil to your cars like not purposely but like you just like you could not do some of the shit that you do and like now that i'm trying to like drive close and stay close and like literally being glued to somebody is like more important than whatever on the car like you're gonna do shit that like you're gonna slam a gear fucking like just i don't know just just aggressive shit that could potentially break the like when you blew two axles at the same time in Canada, I was like, why the fuck is he running these tires? Like I was like, it's just he went through like six fucking axles in one event. Well that's because Zestina sent me the wrong tires. Yeah. I was using the R's and they sent me the RS's and they were nuts on the rear. Yeah. But you're like, they're sick. It was fun. Yeah, like because like, you're doing <laughs> yeah. crazy shit. Like yeah. the car is hella fast, and that was when you were like 280 horsepower with like, uh, maybe. No, I don't think so. I think was it more? was more. Than, okay, I don't know. But you were stock the axles been through so many phases. You were like throwing it in. I was like, on stock axles. Yeah. Yeah. You like threw it in. I remember I was behind you and you like threw it in and just like the car went nowhere because you blew both at the same time. First, it was just stacks of SR gearboxes and then I yeah. would switch to Z and never broke one of those. And then I just started breaking axles and diffs. I broke it. I, I finally did it. I finally broke both at the same time in drift. I snapped both output flanges completely clean off in the diff at abs like doing a backy i like threw it in and like dumped it in second and they just fucking exploded kato did it at mayhem yeah during the team tandem at the end of super d sick <laughs> japan yep let's go yeah so i've been like I was talking to some of the dudes i hung out for like one of the one more stop of drift week and i was hanging out with some of the guys from la and they were like back for a second yeah Keep going. they were talking about i was like talking to them about hot pit and like one of the comp things and i was like thinking about it and like i i bought and sold that subaru with like the goal of doing something and drifting with it and uh i've been like thinking a lot about like what i want to do with that right like i it was like it was like a good flip and i ended up with like some cash or whatever and sam gave me that hatch s13 hatch and like i've been trying to figure out shout out sam for hooking it up with s13 hatches yeah back there (laughs) he gave me that car yeah (laughs) <laughs> Sam, oh, sammy skeets sammy sam street sammy skeets aka fucking the the orange gobbler i don't know <laughs> um lay the it's cool it was good uh yeah so i was like thinking about what i want to do with it and i was thinking about like do i want to go do like a comp series you know like blah blah blah. but like i think the i think the plan is we'll see if i can make it happen but i want to build that car to ship to japan to go drive over there because you're gonna have a car there jason's building a car to ship to japan and i think aaron might be also so like that's just like one of those things where like i I haven't gotten to drive in Japan. I've done like a couple laps at Mehan. And before it's something that's like unobtainable, like I really want to make it happen. Yeah, and it's 
as fun as it is to like switch to a right hand drive car and figure all that out it'd be kind of nice to just remove that that yeah. layer of it and just take a car that you'll be more comfortable in so you don't have to worry about that so much yeah and i'm trying to decide like what motor i want to do in there and what makes sense for a car to go to japan obviously like a sr makes the most sense because whatever but like i want to test it and like do the things i don't want to be like working on it out there and blah blah so like that's like i that's like my probably like year to two year plan is i'm gonna try and build an s13 to ship over there so that i can realize my realize my dream of actually like driving mahon and like doing a good job yeah <laughs> Stretching my back more. Oh, I'm really hyped for that. Uh, <laughs> have I talked about that? I have an S15 in Japan. Uh, yeah. Stupid dummy cheap. <laughs> yeah. So if all the if all the boys are gonna do it, like there'll be trips. I think that's like the, that's like the, that's like the mount. That's like the, that's my Everest. That's my fucking, the mountain I want to climb. I want to be able to say that I've done that. And I think that's like pretty, pretty high on my list of things that I've like wanted to do my whole life. Yeah. I want to do at least a round of D1 lights or many. I definitely want to compete in Japan. It's a different level. Yeah. For the driving that we're into. Yeah. You know, Ameri it's different. American drifting competition is its own challenge. It's, um, fuck, man, people are serious. I drove Winter Jam, the comp at Winter Jam, which was an FD shootout. Ju yeah. Judged by like Ryan Lontane and the FD judges. Yeah, I didn't realize. Brian Eggert, the one more time king. I didn't realize until we were Sorry. there. I, I really wanted to drive turn seven because I had never driven the Formula D course as many times really? as I've driven Sonoma. And I've done Winter Jam before. I never drove turn seven. <clears throat> so I was hyped. And then I said something about it to Lex. And he was like, oh, it's an FD pro shootout thing. Like, you have to have different tech. And I was like, what? No. And then I talked to Farouk, and he was like, oh, no, this one, they're just going to allow normal tech. I was like, oh, okay. Let's take the stock Z. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was fucking lame, though? They shortened the run-up into the entry. Really? Yeah. I was really bummed about that. I wanted to go fast. Yeah. Turn seven sick. Yeah, but okay. that was... That was really fun. I hadn't done like a serious competition like that in many years. And people are serious, dude. Yeah. There's a lot of really serious cars. Yeah. <clears throat> Guys out there with their teams changing their tires for them and shit. Yeah. It's not the pro am that you did or even. No. Yeah. It's not wild. Even close. And like that's the whole thing. Like I was thinking about like, do I want to do like a comp series or do I want to go to Japan? And it's like I went when I did race wars. There was like a few teams there that had like spotters and radios, and they were like changing tires literally every run. And I did the whole I did the whole thing on the same pair of tires. I did the entire top sixteen double elimination on one pair of Accelera six fifty ones in the back i did the same thing yeah in that comp and i think people were changing tires like every run yeah i was like what what i mean but I, I get it i mean like i was chasing some of these cars and they're blowing a ton of smoke and but and not going that fast yeah no offense to those drivers it's just the way the cars are set up uh, yeah. for that style of drifting like yeah. it's all about you have to ride all those outer zones, and that's where I struggled in the Z. Yeah. So I I posted about it. I like sacrificed a lot of 
outer zone to stay close and that worked almost through the whole comp yeah and i got smoked by like a 800 horsepower corvette dude corvettes are your fucking nemesis i thought we were going one more time though i, I beat another guy in a corvette so i you know All i got right. my I redemption you, bro. and a mustang i lost to a mustang at good luck or at uh amateur drift series stang boys but yeah i got my redemption redemption not it's, gonna lie, I was thinking that on the line. I'm like, I can't, I can't lose <laughs> to another Mustang, Mustang <laughs> or Corvette again. <laughs> yeah, something about them bald eagles that just fuck you up, huh? I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. So we're announcing Julian's driving the RTR Mustang next year in Formula Jones. Just kidding. I always said, like, if there was a Formula D car that I would want to try to drive, it would be one of those. Yeah. They're probably wild. I talked to Adam LZ about it, though, and yeah. he said they drive fucking weird. Huh. Said they drive super weird. Hmm. So uh, I take that back, I think. I think maybe, like, Gucci's car would be cool to drive or something like that. Hmm. Yeah. Wisefab feels weird. Yeah, it does. Gucci's car is on Wisefab. They're all on Wisefab at this point, except Matt. Yeah, you kind of need it for yeah. Formula D. Yeah. It has its place in drifting for sure. It does. I used to hate on it way more, but I don't hate on it. It's just different. It's for its own thing. Yeah. Um, Zach from GK Tech, actually. Shout out, Zach. Appreciate the support from GK Tech big time. He's helped me a lot on this Z, and it drives fucking good. Yeah, almost as good as that NOS works. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, Zach actually sent me. uh, Should I talk about this? Yeah, he probably doesn't care. They're coming out with like a a full upright. The whole knuckle and upright are one piece. Whoa. It's like really fancy. It's like wise fabby kind of stuff. And he sent it to me and he wanted me to put it on before going to Grange. He wanted like a durability test and I'm pretty good at breaking shit. I've always said if you could have any job, it should be uh durability testing for like manufacturers. I would love to like be a stunt driver or do some kind of job like that, but I'm fucking six seven. Like yeah. I can't. <laughs> yeah. I can't sucks yeah. yeah um you could stunt double for the rock dude i just need to put on like 60 pounds <laughs> <Yeah>. of muscle <laughs> but yeah so he sent it to me and I, I was gonna put it on and try it for him and then one of their guys tested it i i told him i was like man i can't change it before i go to grange like i really want to throw down with Nauki and I don't want to yeah. be like trying a whole new setup. And yeah. And he was totally understanding about it. And I was going to put it on right after. And he messaged me on the way back and was like, yeah, one of our guys tested it. So it's, it's really good, but it's way more like wise fab kind of feel. And without like a bunch of power and grip, it probably won't suit you very well. So if you, if you need to like send it to someone else or whatever, that that's fine. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I mean, I was willing to try it. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't think it would really suit my driving style. This car, it feels so good. Yeah. I don't want to change it. Yeah. It feels so good. Yeah. Leaving cars alone is good. I've definitely been leaving my car alone. Yeah. But yeah, they've helped me out a lot. So I was willing to give it a shot. Willing to give it a shot. But. He gets it. Yeah. He, he gets it. So that was cool. Cool story. <laughs> I got some parts <laughs> that I didn't try. <sighs> yeah. So lots of stuff. Lots of stuff like pending the next few moves in life. <sighs> yeah. 
I think it's back on the up, even though we're, you know, a lot of uncertainty with our living situation and all that. Yeah, I mean, at least you know, like, at least you know what's going on with you enough to where you can, like, make adjustments and not just, like, try shit and, like, try and be your own doctor, you know? Yeah, you're the worst fucking podcast guys ever, but it's okay. Uh, Just to be clear, my back hurts from a new thing. It's like (laughs) new upper back pain from a workout I did the other day. And then I sat at the computer all day yesterday, editing video and then updating Heatmaker store stuff. And halfway through the day, my back just like was on fire and it's hurting really bad now. But the crazy thing is after changing my diet, so much of my, I don't take ibuprofen anymore. I don't have to take it. That's dope. And my lower back like barely hurts now. That's crazy. Eat better. Feel good. Do shit. If, yeah, if you're if you're in your 30s or even your 20s or 40s even, and you are constantly in pain, and you're like, "Oh, I'm just getting old." Nah, it shouldn't be like that. And it's funny, like Phoebe was always saying, like, "Oh, there's so many things poisoning us," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever." She got this app on her phone where you can scan barcodes and it like tells you how safe your products are for you. Whoa. Dude, literally everything we use was super toxic. Whoa. So like through researching diet and all that stuff and seeing what it felt like to change the way I was eating, it made me want to get rid of all the bullshit. Like I just use a bar of soap now for everything. My hair and everything. Huh. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. Bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A lot of bad shit. Yeah. Big pharma and fucking the food industry. It's not like conspiracy theory, dude. It's all about money for them and they're we're all getting fucking poisoned. <laughs> sick. They don't make money if we're not sick or in pain. Damn. It's capitalism. Yeah. I mean, shit's kind of wild, dude. Life's weird. Mm-hmm. Cheers, dude. <laughs> yeah yeah we're all gonna die someday so that sucks but get it while you can you know take care of yourself try and have a good time be good to people lead by example try and be a better person the fuck else are you gonna do you know push That's yourself it. yeah you got to push yourself and push your friends. Surround yourself with people that are trying to level up and are willing to willing to hear if you point out some things they can improve on and they don't take it personally. You got to have friends like that. Yep. And vice versa. You got anything else for the people? I don't think so. Sick. I don't know how long we've been doing this. No idea. If I had to guess like two and a half hours, I'm pretty good at guessing time now. 
pod boss thing. You know, I'd, I'd be out here podding, tied, just fucking eating Tide Pods and podcasting. <laughs> How crazy is Listening that? Listening to P.O.D. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, all right. I think we're good. Fucking bye. Is that it? I think so. Is there anything else? I don't know. We'll do another one eventually. All right. Cool. Good Fuck. job, man. Fucking love you, man. You too, dude. Thanks for uh, supporting me in all my, you know, shit. Appreciate it. Same. Love you all too. Yeah. Stay up. (laughs) 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 Yo, you made it all the way to the end of the episode. You should see therapy therapists. Um, makes us look good to the podcast overlords if you watch listen to the whole thing and of course YouTube um, be sure to subscribe and like and all that shit um, follow us on IG at good as cast follow the guest check out their links in the description check out the sponsor links in the description and I uh, just want to say thank you for making it to the end of the episode you fucking legends <laughs>